Hi guys, welcome to Sips of Faith with Bella. I am Bella, your host. Ugh. See, no. Okay, this shouldn't give me the ick because it's like what I am, but it's like YouTube, so I guess it's not, whatever. My name is Bella. Welcome to my channel. This is my second video, um, and I'm just so, I'm so excited for today's video because, hold on, I need this. Um, today's video is actually something that I have such a passion talking about, um, which you're like, girl, what the heck? This video is not supposed to be like, la la la, princess, squirrels. Like, it's, I mean, yeah, it sucks. You're gonna get your heart. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I want to talk about what the Lord has taught me. And in this season of my life, and I want to help you guys who are walking through it and just give you my best advice and um, my best godly advice, obviously, um, because I feel like there's not that many videos that talk about what to do when you're in this season, when you're hurting, when you're in the breaking, like, what the heck do I do? Cause you're a Christian now. So you can't react like when you were in your BC era, like when you were in your before Christ time, you know, like all ratchet, like you can't do that anymore. Like the Holy Spirit changes you. So it's like, what do you do? And like, how do I deal with this hurt? And how do I deal with this pain? Because when you're in a breakup, it feels like your entire life is just like, psh, like, like it just falls apart. You know, you lose someone and you don't lose. It's not like, it's a different type of grief, pretty much. You lose someone that you never imagined your life without, you know, you planned a future with this person and now they're gone. So it's like, what do I do? How do I deal with this? And that's where I'm here to help you in this journey of this crazy time of your life. Um, whether you are dealing with a heartbreak, whether, yeah, this is pretty much mostly breakups. Um, or if you're just wanting to watch this, um, welcome. Um, I really pray that this video reaches the right people. And I pray that this t video touches the right people. Um, and I pray, Lord, that you would speak through me. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so first, let's start off with my coffee drink, because that's kind of the whole point of, like, Sips of Faith with Bella, like, the name or whatever. Um, also, this cup, it is so slay. Ah, letter B, obviously, for Bella. Duh. Um, I'm actually drinking mushroom coffee, which is, like, this, like, herbs. It's mushrooms, like, you know, the ones that they plant in the floor or in the, in the, <laughs> in the ground. Um, and it has lion's mane and it has like other properties that are really good for your gut health, really good for your brain. Um, so yeah, do research on it. It is delicious. I really love it. The one I'm drinking kind of tastes like hot chocolate. I'm like, ah, so good. So go grab your coffee, grab your notebooks or notebook, grab your Bible and we'll hop on. We'll hop on. <laughs> we'll start with the video. I want this video not to be just kind of like a motivational, make you feel good, like, you know what, like, when someone leaves, it's because the grass wasn't greener on their side. Like, that is not the type of video this is going to be. This is going to be, like, what I did to heal, I guess, and what I did to, like, really allow the Lord and what I feel like I've learned in this season. So, first of all, I haven't been broken up with before, so this is... Like, this wasn't my first big breakup. Um, this was like my third big breakup. And this time around, because the other two times that I went through a breakup, I dealt with it so poorly. I did not deal with it the way that I feel like the Lord wanted me to deal with it. Um, I dealt with it with my flesh and I dealt with it with my emotions and my mind and my, my the way I wanted to. The way that I felt was right is the way I you know dealt with that and so what I did in this season is what I believe was so different um so when I got broken up with um I remember just being like like I, I was frozen like the way that it happened I, I was just frozen I got broken up with through t <laughs> through text message I know I know get your giggles out huh. yeah but anyways so I got broken up with through text message and I was like, Lord, like in that moment, I like couldn't cry. Like I thought, like I knew the breakup was going to happen and I had something in my, and my, I felt like the Holy Spirit told me before it happened that it was going to happen. And so in a way I was already mentally prepared 
um, to get hurt again. And this time, like when it happened, I couldn't cry. I just pretend this is my phone, right? I just kind of looked at my phone and I was just like, dang, that sucks. <laughs> like I felt so numb to the pain and I was like, whatever. And then it hit me. And then I was like, <gasps> and I started crying, whatever. So I ended up driving. I'm gonna just give you guys a really, really quick story. So yeah, I ended up driving to my aunt's house cause I was on the phone with her and I was like, you broke up with me. <sighs> and she's like, girl, come over, come over. So I ended up going to her house and then I ended up just talking to her, getting Starbucks, like getting my little drink, get my coffee drink. And then, yeah, I just felt like, uh, but I remember just her, um, she's like, I want you to read this over your heart. I want you to read this over your life. Um, because I told her, I was like, I thought this was a guy I was going to marry. Like, I genuinely thought this is the man that the Lord had for me. And I was just, you know, being honest. I was heartbroken. I was, I was lost. I was confused. I was like, God, like what is going on? But she's like, Bella, I want you to read this over yourself. And I'm going to share it with you guys. And it's Psalms 91. This is the ESV version, but it says, he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will abide in the shadow of the almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, from the deadly pastilions. He will cover you with his pinion and under his wing you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terrors of the night, nor the arrows that fly by the day, nor the pastilions that walks in the darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recumbrance of the wicked because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the most high who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague shall come near you for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways on their hands. They will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adar, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him with with long life. I will satisfy him, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. The last part is the Lord speaking to his kids. Okay, so pretty much this verse in itself is just the Lord's protection and the Lord's love for his kids and for those he calls his own. And my aunt was like, Bella, like you have to realize that like everything happens for a reason. The Lord does everything out of love, everything out of love. And there's some things and you, you know, there's things that happen that are out of our control and there's things that happen that are in our control and there's things that happen that are in other people's control, right? And you have to realize that like this verse in itself is just saying that God is love. This verse in itself is saying God is protecting you. God will protect your heart. God will not let you be hurt, okay? This is where I want to come with you in this. When dealing with a breakup, it is so easy for us to point fingers. Okay, been there, done that. I'm not going to say I never have because that would be a big fat lie. I have, okay? And I'm not going to lie and say that I haven't talked bad about that other person because I'm human, okay? And I'd be like, oh, but they did this to me. Oh my gosh they're a sinner. Oh my gosh, they did this to me. Da, 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 da. But I want to tell you that is not the right way to deal with it. So I just remember being in prayer after I got broken up with and I came home and I went into my closet and I just started praying. And I was like, God, what do you want me to do? I was like, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to beat myself up for this. I'm not going to go down the same rabbit hole that I did last time. I want this time to be different because God, I know that they're is a purpose for this and there's a reason for this and something my mom always says is every single thing happens for a reason everything happens for a reason okay and it's true every single thing does and so i was like god what do you want to be different in this and here are the things that i did that were different one i prayed for him pray 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 prayer is so powerful okay there is a song called the blessing right and it's saying it's it's a different type of worship song because you're not singing it to the Lord, but you're singing it over people and you're singing blessings over people. 
or over yourself or over your family or over your situation, whatever it might be. But the blessing, I even think that over my dad, you know, over people that it, it was really hard for me to forgive. And I'm not saying that like in this breakup season, it's going to be easy for you to just forget all the hurt that they have done or all the hurt that you've done to other people. You know, it's, we carry those emotions. Our emotions are real and they're valid, but it's like, how are you going to deal with them? Right? Because you can either go left way or you can go right way. You, you can choose, okay? You can choose how you deal with it. And so something that I did was I was like, God, I'm going to sing this over them. I'm going to sing this over their family. Or I'm going to sing this over his mind. And I'm going to pray for him because, Lord, like, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. Because what Satan wants you to do when you are in a breakup is pray curses on the person that hurt you, Okay. Satan wants you to literally like curse a person that hurts you's name and, you know, wish bad upon them and this and that. But before they even dated you, they were your brother and sister in Christ. So it's like having that mindset, you know. Um, but anyways, that is the number one thing that I would recommend to you is like pray over them, pray over their heart, pray over their mind. And you have to realize like when hurt, when people hurt you, it's out of a place of hurt. And when you hurt people, you know it's out of a place of hurt. And most of the time, the things that we say have actually nothing to do with the person standing right in front of us. It actually has everything to do with what we feel inside. And there's a verse that says, what comes out of the man's heart or what comes out of a um, man's mouth is what his heart believes. You know, what he thinketh he is. Um, and so that verse is so powerful, right? But my number one recommendation would be pray for this person, pray for them, pray a blessing over them, pray that the Lord protects them. And the second thing I want to say is like, don't let the enemy steal those amazing memories that you had with that person, because those are yours to cherish. Okay. It doesn't matter what they did. Don't like, there's obviously going to be those negative things and they might've hurt you in a way that's like, dang, remember that like, the Lord is my father. He loves me. He cares for me. He also loves and cares for this other person so much. Um, and he protects us. He protects both of us because every good and perfect gift is from the Lord up above. And this is something I really want to tell you. And if there's one thing that sticks with you in this video, I pray that this is it. Do not let the enemy steal those memories that you had with them that were joyful, that were amazing, because those are yours to cherish. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord up above, but the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And a lot of people are like, God is the one that broke my heart. God is the one that allowed them to do this to me. God, God isn't the one. He can't, he's not capable of doing evil. The enemy is the one that comes and perverts things that are beautiful. And that's why it is so important that if, if you are in a relationship, okay, it has to be with a person of prayer, okay? John 15 says that I'm the vine, here are the branches. I'm the vine, you are the branch. Apart from me, you can do nothing, okay? If your relationship is not centered in Christ, and if your relationship is not filled with prayer and is not filled with, you know, being around godly community and being around people that are going to flip your relationship or whatever, if it doesn't have God in the center, it's going to fall apart. And that's where the enemy likes to come in and destroy things that are good. So those memories that you had with that person, let those stick with you in your heart forever. Because those are amazing memories. Those are fun memories. Those are memories that, you know, make you laugh and smile and like know that those are yours to keep. Okay. The bad memories, hey, they happen. They happen. Remember those good memories. But when you remember those good memories, Know that those are going to happen again, that they're, that you are going to experience a love like that again. Um, and like, it's just, when you are in a breakup season, this is such a beautiful time to really, really let the Lord just heal your heart, mend your heart. And one of my favorite verses for that is Jeremiah 18.3. And this verse is just so beautiful because it literally has to do with brokenness. And how the Lord is, you know, repairing stuff. It's called the potter and the clay. This is uh, 18 verse 3. So I went down to the potter's house and there he was working at the wheel and the vessel he was making out of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand. And he reworked it into another vessel as it seemed good for the potter to do. Then the word of the Lord came to, to me, O house of Israel, can I not do to you 
as this potter has done, declares the Lord. Behold, in behold, like the clay is in the potter's hands, so you are in my hands. Your heart, your life is in the hands of the Lord, okay? You are going to laugh again. You are going to have butterflies again. And the person that the Lord sends you is going to make sense, okay? But you're in this period right now of healing and you're in this period right now that you've never and maybe you have been in before and maybe you're just like oh my gosh like why does this always happen to me oh my gosh am I never gonna find love oh my gosh like da -da -da -da. maybe the Lord is trying to say hey let me change your perspective because when you know God is the one that brings good God is the one that does good the enemy is evil pure evil that's all he can do demons they love to torture you they love to torture something good that the lord has brought but that doesn't mean that you're never going to get that again okay that's what the enemy likes to tell you is that hey just because this relationship failed you're never going to be happy again or just because this person is out of your life that was your person like mm, never going to get it again but mark 10 9 says that what the lord has put together no man can split apart okay so whoever you're meant to be with nothing will take that away from you because as long as i mean you could take it away from yourself if you make that person an idol what the lord has for you is for you okay the lord loves marriage he created marriage he loves the idea of marriage more than we do okay but in this season heal learn about yourself learn about the lord number one is i love to journal journaling will always be something i talk about I have so many journals like these are just two random ones that I have right here but I have like stacks of journals I write letters to the Lord I say dear Jesus this is how I'm feeling or I'll pray for people or I'll pray for myself or I'll pray for I have a whole journal for my future husband with prayers with letters with encouragement with you know me saying dang like today was a really hard day I really wish I knew you things like that have faith you know have faith that you do have someone out there for you pray for them pray for them every night pray for their family pray for your guys's future family you know don't lose faith and then the second thing is get into community get into community where people are going to uplift you where you're going to uplift people make friends you know have those godly friends um and quick little testimony but while living in Arizona, I was like, Lord, like, oh, I just have no friends. But when I moved to Chicago, like, I literally met the most godliest people that I've ever met in my life. Like, I, Amy, Violetta, uh, Emily, and Valerie, if you are watching this, I love you. Those are my girls. Like, those girls literally got on their knees, prayed with me, prayed for me. You know, like, they genuinely are women of God, and I'm so blessed to have known them. But anyways... Get in community. Let those people uplift you because who your friends are like is going to be really impactful in your life and in your marriage too because who is going to pray for you? Who's going to pray alongside you when you and your husband or you and your wife go through things? Um, third thing, you learn your value through Christ. You know, spend time with God and let his words, this is all his truth. This is all his love wash over you and let those words become your truth and i want to give you some verses right now okay so joel 225 this is where you should probably get your notebook but joel 225 you will laugh again romans 828 he will work it out all for your good and his glory genesis 520 what the enemy meant for evil god will turn it around for good first corinthians 13 4 god is love God is all you need. The Lord is love. He will satisfy every single desire. Romans 8, 18, it'll all be worth it. All the pain that you are facing right now will all make sense and be worth it one day. Psalms 147, he is near to the brokenhearted. He heals the brokenhearted. Psalm 145, 18 through 21, cry to him. He hears your prayers. Be honest with him. Like he loves that. He loves when you're honest with him. Um, Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to him when you're weary and let him exchange for his yoke that is light for your burden that is heavy. Um, John fourteen twenty five through thirty one. The Holy Spirit is there to help you. The Holy Spirit is something that lives within you, and you are so capable of you know getting out of that grave that this enemy has put you in you know you are capable of that because of the holy spirit that is in you you are capable of that because jesus demonstrated it he said he literally rose from the grave 
okay? He walked out of his grave so that way we could walk in freedom because of him, okay? Um, and yeah, he's a vine. He, like, in this season of, you know, being single, like, you're gonna learn so much about yourself. You're gonna learn to never settle again. You're gonna learn um, so many amazing things. And I want to encourage you, do not waste this time waiting for that person to come because they will come. If you have the desire of marriage, it, I believe it's gonna happen, okay? Just leave it, just leave it. Like if you saw your future, you wouldn't be worrying, right? But then where would faith exist? But anyways, like don't waste this time because one day you're gonna have kids, one day you're gonna be super busy, one day you're gonna be like, ha I wish I would have not wasted my singleness. I know you're probably saying like rolling your eyes, whatever, but like there's so many things that you can do. Like you could start a YouTube channel, you could start a podcast, you can move to a different state I did that. It was the most fun experience I've ever had in my life. You can do YWAM. You can do circuit riders. You can um, start making music. You can hang out with your friends. You can go to the beach. You can, uh, I don't know. There's so many things you can do. You can learn, educate yourself, okay? Something that I'm doing is I'm studying medicine and I have become so passionate about what I learn. I love reading books. I love journaling. I love watching Gilmore Girls. Like those are the things I like to do for fun. I like baking. I like cooking. Um, so yeah, like there's so much you can do in this season. Don't waste it because you feel as if like you're, you know, never going to get someone if you don't think about it. Like that's, that's literally so stupid. I'm sorry, but it's like so true. Like our thought mentality when, when we're like, oh, if I don't think about my other person, then they're not going to come to me. That's not true. Um, so yeah, when it comes to like healing and stuff, like pray a blessing over that other person and just, you know, pray for them, pray for your heart. Prayer changes everything and invite people into that spot in your life. So yeah, um, I just want to end this video and say that I pray that these little whatever helped you and yeah, God bless you.